Hey you guys, so today I don't have Susan with me, but I do have Dr. Kireki, who is a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist, and he uh, is a lecturer at Nairobi, Hosp Nairobi University. Nairobi University. Right? And a fertility specialist. And a as fertility well. specialist. Yes. Which actually brings us into today's topic, which is infertility. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I would say that infertility is one of those um, topics that sort of has a stigma in society because, for the most part, you are expected to grow up, get a job, get married, have children. Yeah. And then once you have the first one, you have the second and the third. Within a certain time period, it's just like there's this timetable to your mm. life. And I think that can put a lot of pressure to both men and women um, if they are in a situation where infertility is something that's, you know, plaguing them. So I wanted to start by asking, what are some of the reasons why infertility could be affecting both men and women? Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to the studio. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for actually allowing us to talk about this very important um, subject. Yeah. Because it is a big problem. Yeah. In terms of numbers, or even before we go to the numbers, yeah. World Health Organization has actually defined um, infertility as um, if you have in a, you are in a relationship yeah. and you're having regular intercourse yeah. and you're not using any contraception and in a space of one year you have not conceived. So that is called primary infertility. Oh, so there's even a time period. There's even a time period. Okay. So if you've had a conception before, yeah. uh, or you have had a baby in the past, and then again in the same time period, regular intercourse, no contraception, and no conception has happened, that is secondary infertility. Okay. So we have both okay. primary and secondary infertility. Ah. It is a huge problem, actually. On average in the world, about 8 to 9% in the so-called developed world. Um, are actually uh, have a problem with infertility. Okay. When it comes to our countries, it's about 15, actually, last week, two weeks ago, I was in a, in a, in a, in a symposium mm. in uh, Lisbon in Portugal. And somebody came up with some new data which okay. shows that infertility affects about 30 or even 40% of people in the developing world, where Kenya is a part of it. That's really interesting yes. that there's a difference between the developed countries and the developing yes it is yes it is we'll come to that in a oh. we'll come to that in a few minutes yeah. so if we say for example even if we were to say that um, infertility affects about 15 percent of Kenya, the Kenyan population okay Kenyan population is about let's say 45 million yeah yeah so 10 percent of that is 4.5 million right. and then you add five percent to that that would be six about, million, about six million yeah. plus yeah so it's a huge number yeah it's a huge number it's actually an ep epidemia if, yeah. you can, if you can call right. it that but simply because uh, people are not dying left right and center and uh, you know there are no emergencies so it's actually not being treated as a very serious problem oh. number one yeah number two we don't talk about about infertility just like you said, you know, you are supposed to, uh, you're born, go to school, finish school, get married, have a ch have children, yeah. one, two, three, right. and even more, yeah. and then uh, everything is happy. Yeah. But then that is not the reality. Reality yeah. is completely different. We have been um, socialized to think that um, we don't talk about these issues, this is taboo, and especially for men, men are never infertile. Most societies, especially yeah. in our part of the world, um, we think that it's only women who have issues. Right. But we do have issues on both sides, the men and, and the women. Yeah. Which brings us back to your question, right. which you asked, what could be some of the reasons mm. of infertility? Now, in terms of proportions, um, about um, 25 to 30 percent, depending on, um, on different, different uh, researchers, um, the cause of infertility is on the female side. Okay. About 30 even to up to 50 percent is on the male side. Oh. So the male percent is higher actually than the female side. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the perceptions are completely Different. The opposite. The opposite. Skewed, yeah. And then you have about, let's say, 10 percent or so where it affects both of them. Okay. And then about 5 to 10 percent where we actually, we really don't know. It's so-called, you know, undefined, oh. yes, unknown reasons for infertility. Okay. Now, um, ladies first, as usual. So <laughs> let's go to us. Let's <laughs> so dive in. some of the reasons of infertility in women. Number one is age. 
Age, age, age. Okay. In this part of the world, it's not so much of a problem. But where I was working in the UK, age over 35, we used to see a lot of patients who are over 35, simply because uh, they have to go to school, finish university, right. get a career, um, sort of settle down in that career right. before they think about, you know, having a family. Okay. So by the time they realize, oh, wow, I'm 30, I'm almost 40, and I don't have a family. Yeah. So it's a rat race right. to start having these babies. So age is a big problem. Apart from uh, age being a problem, the genetic material, which mm. is in the eggs, also grows older with, with time. Okay. So it becomes a problem later on for these ladies to have um, uh, get pregnant, or even if they do, there's a higher percentage of miscarriages and having um, babies who have issues, um, health issues. Okay. So age is a problem. In this part of the world, we have a big problem with blocked tubes. Okay, and what causes blocked tubes? Most of the time is infection. Infections which sometimes the ladies actually have no symptoms at all. Chlamydia is a very, very big problem uh, because chlamydia actually infects the whole reproductive organ yeah. and it usually doesn't have any symptoms. It doesn't give any symptoms wow. at all. Wow, okay. Yeah. So blocked tubes. And then we have also TB. Tuberculosis, uh. a big problem as well. We have an issue with the polycystic ovaries where um, because um, of some biochemical um, issues, actually ladies are born with this. It is a good and a bad thing right. um, in the sense that when you have polycystic ovaries, you have a lot of eggs, a lot okay. of a high reserve of eggs. But then again, it also affects your fertility in other ways, where you have um, irregular periods, for example. Your hormones are all over the place. Oh. Sometimes you may have some hair in different places, what, what you call hirsutism, hirs yeah. hirsutism, where you have some hair, you know, around your your, right. your beard, you know, around your lips, yeah. sometimes around the breast, and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. This uh, uh, is caused by, by the biochemical you know, oh, processes wow. that go on okay. in place. We have a big issue, in, again, in this part of the world with um, fibroids. Mm. Um, about uh, different researchers, different people say about 40 to 60 percent of women of African descent, it doesn't matter whether it's in Kenya, whether it's in uh, the US or whatever it is, if you are a lady of, human, of, of African descent, you will have um, uh, fibroids at some point in your reproductive period, and and again, really? yeah, most oh, of them, you okay. said forty to sixty percent. Yeah, some don't have them at all, but the majority have a small fibroid. Sometimes they're huge fibroids. Yeah, ten twenty centimeters. Sometimes they are very tiny. They're they're smaller, but very many of them. Oh wow! And the biggest problem is if we have these fibroids in the cavity of um, of the womb, because uh, embryos are very sensitive. So even if it's something tiny there, maybe one centimeter or two centimeters, for an embryo that looks like the Himalaya, so it cannot surmount it, so mm. that it can, it can, you know, implant. Most people don't talk about um, lifestyle. I think lifestyle. we have we have changed the way the way we eat, what yes. we eat, the amounts we eat, That's and true. obviously some other things which you've started doing. Ladies are doing, you know, drinking alcohol, the amount of alcohol that that is being drunk. Um, uh, smoking as well, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. It's a small percentage of uh, patients who have infertility <coughs> who are born without without the womb, but that is a small, very tiny percentage. And then there are also other other um, other issues where we talk about hormones. We have the immune system, especially autoimmune diseases. Okay. Yes. Well, what about the the men? The men uh, is also interesting. Okay. Um, uh, again, uh, the biggest problem that we are seeing nowadays is um, the number of sperm. When you look at the semen analysis, there are several things that we look at. We look at the amount of um, ejaculation that, uh, that we receive. We look at the number of sperms in a milliliter. We look at the count, which is the total number of, um, of sperms. We look at the motility, how these sperms swim. It's all very important. We look at the normal forms because um, in those millions of sperms, not all of them are going to be normal. Mm -hmm. A certain proportion of them are going to be normal, and we look at that as well. What we have noticed, what we are seeing, is that a lot of men have issues with sperm. Either the amount of the, of the ejaculate we are getting is not enough, either the concentration, the number of millions of sperms per milliliter is also not enough, um, or the total count is also not there, or sometimes we have the motility is not, is not where it is supposed to be. The normal forms are also um, a problem. That is one issue. 
Another issue is uh, blocked tubes as well, because ah. in the male also there are tubes which actually bring out the sperm from where whatever they are stored. And uh, mm -hmm. this, most of the time, is caused by, um, by infection. Oh. Yes, especially gonorrhea, we have syphilis and, and so on, sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. We also have, unfortunately, we have men who don't produce any sperm at all. Um, because of the infection, the uh, infection, the tubes are blocked, mm. so the sperm uh, doesn't come out. Okay. We have, though we don't see that in this part of the world, there is um, it's a blockage um, of the tubes because of an excess production of um, of mucus. Oh. In the, but this is more in other places, especially in the U.S. among Jews. This is very common among the Jew, the Jewish people. Oh, yes. But Interesting we don't that see it's it, specific yeah. to. It's genetic. Oh. It's genetic. So, and because they intermarry quite a bit, yeah. so they keep on passing these to their, to their children. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have that. We have lifestyle. Uh, we, we like our nyamachomo, we like our beers, we like um, smoking, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. And these, actually, the more we add on weight, this affects, number one, our performance. Okay. Um, uh, it also um, uh, affects, you know, the way, the way we behave. And it also uh, leads to, to infertility. Okay. There are other things which, there are other causes, which, for example, when uh, we are growing up as men, if the testicles don't descend, because anatomically, the testicles, when you're born, the testicles should descend into, into the scrotum. Mm -hmm. If there is no descent of, this, of the testicle or testicles, that can be an issue. Okay. Now, um, the other issues of, um, of trauma, for example, um, men, you know, we are out there posterior and we like, you know, contact games, taekwondo, karate and so on. Oh. Rugby, for example, yeah. football. Sometimes we watch on, on, um, on you know, right. on the TV yeah, and, yeah. you know, a ball is hit and yeah, kids yeah. and, you know, that, that Could can... something even like cycling? It is no. thought that, yes, okay. that cycling actually can have an effect wow. or does have an effect. Um, uh, some researchers actually even say that um, uh, even uh, taking warm baths, hot baths, so what? steam baths can also, can, also affect, oh. can also affect that. So for those gentlemen, maybe unless you have one or two babies, yeah. maybe you should stop going for hot baths or steam baths. Wow, that okay. Time. Something which is new, actually, which is also uh, being debated upon is the uh, use of laptops. Yes, use of laptops because the crown jewels, like. we'll call them crown jewels. Yes. The crown jewels are supposed to be in a cool place. So if we increase the temperature in the scrotum, for example, we put our laptops on our laps and we are working wow. away without any problems. The heat from the laptop actually goes into where it is not supposed that to is go. Good to and that is Wow. And that. Mind blown. <laughs> I did not see a laptop coming into this conversation. But, um, but, but is, yes. thanks for that, Dr. Anna. And now I'm actually curious to know yes. what are some of the things that we could do to prevent mm -hmm. or maybe even undo infertility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for both men and women? Yes. I think that is, um, that is very... It's good, number one, that uh, you <coughs> have raised this topic here in the studio yeah. because, number one, is to create awareness. People have to be have aware. Have conversations. People have to, we have to yeah. open up and we have to talk about it. That we have issues and these issues actually can be solved. So awareness, awareness, awareness. Okay. Because it's taboo when you talk about um, infertility. That lady can't deliver. Uh, that man, what sort of man is he? Right. I mean, if you can't impregnate your wife, what kind of man are you? It's really no, that sort sad. Of thing. Yeah. Which, which is sad. And men are, men are hurting. Men have, have this pain and we don't know how to bring it out. Mm. Unlike women, where you will meet with somebody who is completely a stranger mm. at um, a doctor's reception, you start talking about different things and that talking is sort of um, therapy. Yeah. yeah. So you leave out, um, you leave there feeling a bit better mm. and you've, uh, you've gained some information. So that yeah. is number one. Okay. We need to change uh, our lifestyle as well. The I mean, the laptops obviously should be on a table <laughs> oh, for starters. Yes. Oh, on a desk, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, number three, what we are eating, what we are drinking, we also need to, uh, to, smoking, to modify. Smoking said, is yeah. definitely a no-go yeah. area. Absolutely no-go right. area. Um, number f the, the other issue which we need to do is um, if there is a problem, mm -hmm. we, have, we are in this relationship, a year has passed and you're having regular intercourse and nothing is happening, seek help. Okay. The sooner we seek help, the better we are going to help. I have cases whereby, um, you know, couples have been in a relationship for 14, 15 years, and the lady wants to really go out and have her, and she has had herself checked, mm. but the men say no. 
mm. Bele Iko Sawa. Yeah. But it's not Bele Iko Sawa, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. So we need to seek help. The earlier, the better. Okay. And, um, and then apart from that, people need to know that um, this is not um, something which, if you can't solve it yourselves, then there are other ways. That is why we are here as uh, specialists whom God has given us the opportunity. We have learned and we have this knowledge and we can avail it mm. to people. So come and seek help and uh, we shall be able to yeah. help. Yeah, and like you said, the statistics are quite high. So it's yes. not like you are this you know, single individual, singled out and you're the only one going yeah. through it. Yes. Um, and then I guess I'd also want to ask about birth control yes. because we've heard things that at least growing up I know I'd hear things like, oh, if you take it for longer than six months, that's it. Mm -hmm. Or if it, you take it for longer than two years and it's, it's so contradicting. But does long-term use mm -hmm. of birth control yes. affect mm -hmm. um, a woman's ability to, con to conceive and to get pregnant? This is actually um, a misunderstanding, okay. number one, because birth control, uh, unlike in some other quarters, yeah. where they say birth control is actually only used for, you know, for, for, for controlling, you know, the number of children you can give birth, and so it is better for spacing the number of children, not really controlling. Controlling, say, okay, you have three children and you don't want to have any more, and so on. Yeah. But we use it in other very many areas as well. Yeah. Um, we use it, for example, in a patient who has very heavy, painful periods. Right. It is used to help that. Um, we use it to control now the cycle. So, yeah. for example, Regulating. you're having mm. you're having your, your your wedding and your you know, uh, what is it called? Honeymoon right. yeah. is coming up. And that is the period when, when you're supposed to have your, 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 your oh, menstrual okay. flow. You can actually use um, uh, pills, yeah. pills to control. actually to, to control it. I've heard it mm. as well for acne. I've heard people say they use yes. it for skin and acne. Yes, yes. There are some specific um, uh, tablets yeah. which are sort of um, engineered yeah. to help, you know, uh, with acne. But you have to use them for, uh, for some time. Okay. Coming back to your question, yeah. is it, uh, does it affect um, uh, fertility? Um, by using the hormones themselves, whether we <coughs> use patches, whether you use tablets, or whether you use injections, they actually stop your normal cycle from, um, from uh, uh, the, the physiology of the normal cycle. But once you have stopped using these medications, yeah. and uh, after some time, it depends, it varies from patient to patient, usually it takes two months, three months, in some extreme cases it can take to see up to six months for your cycle to come back normally. Okay. So once your cycle comes back normally, then you can actually try to get pregnant. So taking um, uh, contraception per se, or hormonal contraception per se, I think it's a myth which has been, you know, bandied oh. and has been that it will stop you from having a baby and so on. Of course it will in the sense that your ovaries are not working, yeah. the physiology, your normal physiology is not there, but once you have stopped taking the, 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 the hormones and your periods have come back, you should be able to, to have a baby. Oh, I was on the team that believed that it does affect your... Actually, on the contrary. If you look at research, um, it is it is out there and it is clear yeah. that uh, sometimes when you have been on oral contraception for some time, um, once you stop, the chances of you getting pregnant is a little bit higher, and the chances of even of even having multiple pregnancy is also slightly increased than in the normal population. There is research out there, and it is up out there for everybody to see. Right. Well, busting myths over here, um, <laughs> and then I guess the last question yes. would be. Mm. <laughs> If someone watching this or, or, you know, someone who is trying to get pregnant and is struggling yes. with infertility yes. um, wanted to go somewhere, do something, yes. what are, are there clinics or faci facilities mm -hmm. or, uh, I guess there are specialists, <laughs> but how do, how, do we, how do we start that journey for people watching and who want to know where to go from now? There are there are several uh, several places. I do that myself, okay. and I'm located at Fifth Gong Avenue okay. on the on the third floor, three one four. It's called <coughs> Frontline Medical Consultants. Yeah, um, they can get in touch with me directly. Okay. For example, I can leave my my, my phone number. Okay, and. Um, we can we can always get in touch. There are also other colleagues who also, who also do that. Yeah. But the first thing that we need to do is to get help. You can go to a, a gynecologist, a general gynecologist, okay. obstetrician and gynecologist, who will do some basic tests. Right. And if they reach a point whereby they can't manage that couple, then they send them over to me, okay. who is now will take will take will take that a little bit further. Okay. And uh, the other uh, specialist centers which 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 are coming up. Okay. So the technology, the knowledge is available. 
Right. So you don't have to go to India, you don't have to go to South Africa, you right. don't have to go. We are doing it here. Yeah, actually. Go to Nairobi Hospital. Yeah, find go to yourself Nairobi Hospital. That, yeah. You know, in the morning I was in theater, I was doing yeah. egg collection, you know, and so on. And mm -hmm. So the technology is here. Yeah. We are here. We have the knowledge. We have brought the knowledge here. Oh. And we are here actually to help. Fantastic. So it's not the end of the world. It's not. It's absolutely, it's not the end of yeah. the world. Absolutely. Oh, man, there's mm. just so much of this, uh, so much about this that I, I feel like we could get into, but I'm feeling pressed for time. I'd love mm. to even hear about, like, freezing eggs and if that's part of the, one of the solutions or ways uh, yes. to... Yeah. Yes, we can freeze. And does that happen? Oh, yes. We can freeze eggs, we can freeze embryos, we can freeze sperm, we can actually freeze them for five years, ten years, and so on. So. The technology we have yeah. is the same technology out there. I, I worked in London, yeah. one of the biggest um, clinics there, with the best, the best um, results. Mm -hmm. And so we have that knowledge. Yeah. We have that knowledge. So let us come. Let them awesome. come and we'll help them. Thank you, Dr. Kiraki. And thank you, Nairobi Hospital, mm -hmm. for allowing us to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. I hope if you're struggling with infertility, I hope that this conversation enlightened you and showed you that you are not alone mm -hmm. and it is not um, this big, cloud that has to hang over your head you can get help and we will leave your contacts um, down below um, again thank you for watching and make sure to tune in in a couple of days for our next video but until then see you and goodbye bye bye <laughs> thank you for watching check out our two cents playlist for more videos and don't forget to subscribe